Today we're going to be thinking about research and the role of research in nursing and how the two interrelate. Now you hear a lot about research these days, people are always talking about it. So what's it all about? Well, as you see here, I've got a, a nursing process sketched out. Now in the nursing process, we start off by assessing the situation. What need does the patient have or what problem does the patient have? Indeed, what potential need or potential problem does the patient have? We assess that. Then, when we've assessed that, we plan what we're going to do about it. How are we going to intervene in this problem? What sort of strategy are we going to follow? So after we've assessed, we plan our strategy. Then, when we've planned what we're going to do, well, we do it. We intervene in some way the intervention stage, or the implementation of the plan. After we've carried out the implementation or the intervention, well, we evaluate how effective it was. Did this intervention work? Was it effective? So the stages of the nursing process, we assess the problem. That leads on to planning. What are we going to do about it? That leads on to what we actually do and then we evaluate whether that intervention has been effective or not. And of course in the nursing process the evaluation should feed back into the next round of assessment. So it's not just a single process, it's an ongoing process of assessment, planning, implementation, evaluation and then re-evaluating based on the assessment we have made. Now the key thing I'd like you to notice here is that we carry out implementations, we intervene. Now if we're going to intervene, if we're going to do something, we must be able to give a reason for carrying out that intervention. In other words, we need a rationale. So all implementations or all interventions, we should be able to give a rationale. The rationale is the reason for what we are doing. Now, if we've got a rationale, that means we can be accountable for what we do. It also means that we can optimise the practice, optimise the intervention. It's likely to be the correct thing to do. So, if we've got a rationale, it means we can have accountability for practice. If we've got a rationale, it means that the intervention that is carried out is most likely to be the correct intervention to address the particular problem that the patient has. The next question is, what do we base our rationale on? Well, traditionally, Rationales have just been based on, on, on practice, on, on tradition really. That's the first level. We do it this way because we always have done it this way. Tradition or, or practice based rationale. The problem with practice is, it may be right or, or it may be wrong. Just because something's been done for a long period of time doesn't necessarily mean it's the best thing to do. For example, for hundreds of years, doctors used to bleed patients, just let some blood out. Now, there are some rare situations these days when we do that. For example, if a patient's got polycythemia, we might want to let a bit of blood out. It's a very rare thing to do. But that used to be done routinely. The idea was that you had to let the, the badness out. It's not really a very good idea because it let the blood out as well. So because things are based on practice, does not mean to say that they're right. Now sometimes they might be. Not all practice is wrong. But practice may be right or it may be wrong. So we can't just say, well, I'm carrying out this implementation because we've always done it this way. We need a bit more. Sometimes we use common sense.
common sense in that we apply principles that we understand. Principles maybe of psychology, principles of physiology. This seems to be a common sense based rationale. So for example, let's consider a patient with a left ventricular failure and pulmonary edema. The fluid collects on the lung fields and this means that the patients have difficulty breathing. The oxygen can't get from the alveoli into the blood. The carbon dioxide can't get from the blood back into the alveoli to be breathed out because the alveoli are waterlogged. So why not sit the patients up and allow the fluid to drain down into the lower part of the chest and that would leave the upper parts of the lung fields clear for gaseous exchange. And this is exactly what we do. We nurse these patients sitting up or even sometimes leaning forward and that improves their breathing. So we can see the improvement in the patient. And as well as that, you can actually see fluid levels on the lung field. So we do know that the water does drain down and leave the upper lung fields clear. So that seems to make sense. However, common sense based rationales, even though they might seem to make sense, can be wrong. For example, when I was a student, we used to massage pressure areas. We used to get a soap and water and rub the area really vigorously. And the rationale we were taught was that this improves the blood supply, so it improves the viability, the health of the tissues. Well, don't not write that down because it's absolute rubbish. It does no such thing. If you massage the area, it's more likely to break down into a pressure sore than if you don't uh, massage the area. What we should do is just relieve the pressure regularly. So even though it seemed to make sense, there seemed to be a common sense based rationale, actually it was the wrong thing to do. And the problem is that our ability to understand how the body works and how it goes wrong are limited. We can't always work it out using these principles, using this kind of common sense. We certainly don't fully understand how the mind works, so we certainly can't give common sense based rationales for all of our more psychological type of interventions. So yes, the common sense based rationale is better than the tradition and practice based rationale, but it would be better still if we can base our rationale and therefore base our intervention on research. Ideally, it would be based on research. Now, research has many advantages. One is that it can look at a large number of cases. What we tend to do is base our practice on our individual experience. So we think that because one intervention worked for one patient, it's going to work for the next patient. That's not necessarily true. Whereas research can look at a whole number of patients and try and find out what is true in the general situation. And we can then apply what is true in the general situation to our specific situation. And that's more likely to work. So research based rationales are likely to give us the correct intervention because it's based on a research process a logical procedure that's been employed to try and work out what the best thing to do is.